Ow. 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 Ah. I did something to my ankle. It really hurts. I don't know what happened. But, but I think I may have the balm for it. This box showed up at my place and we're gonna figure out what this is all about. Pretty sure there's a pretty snazzy helmet in here. Let's open it up and find out. Now, truth be told, I already know what's in the box. This is a 509 Mach 5 Commander helmet, which boasts a built-in Cardo Edge or equivalent. Reason why I know it's around there is because it's got the DMC mesh connection already built in, but that unit itself runs like $400. This helmet clocks in at $520. So, doing the math there, the helmet is $120, right? Well, let's find out exactly what we're working with with this Mach 5 Commander here. Let's pop it out of the box and see what it's like. Stickers. How to wear a helmet. Pretty well boxed, all things considered. I made fun of this as being how to, you know, wear a motorcycle helmet, but it's actually relative. Good God, look how big this is. Um, yeah. Right, okay. Now that we have the helmet out of the box, I do want to take a second and shout out the fact that 509 sent me this helmet. They're not paying me for any of this. They just sent me the helmet so that I could take a look at it. And I got in touch with them via Cardo, who's an awesome sponsor for the channel. So if you wanted to check this motorcycle helmet out for yourself, link is down in the description. And uh, let's, let's dive on in and see what we've got here because immediately just looking at it, there's a lot going on here. First thing I'm gonna note, it's a little heavy. Now, that does make sense given the amount of electronic stuff that's in here, as well as a lot of the you know mechanisms to pump up the pads and so forth. We're gonna have to see how it feels on my head after you know riding around for a while. Now, there is something on here I really, really don't like, and I wish that they had done different, and that is the locking strap. I do not like this fid lock thing that's on here. The way it works is it's essentially magnetic, right? So you put the strap on here and it finds itself and locks it in place. And I will admit, it's not, I'm pulling pretty damn hard on there and it's not coming out. However, you just pull this little red tab and away it goes. I don't like this. I would much rather have seen just a D-ring. That's my one real piece of advice to 509 here right off the table, this has got to go. However, the coolest part of this helmet has to be the integrated Cardo system here. So you've got two buttons over here as well as the Cardo rolly wheel, as well as two buttons here to turn the thing on and off and start doing all your pairing. This is the very first helmet I've owned that has a light on the back of it. Now, this does just seem to be a light. It doesn't seem like it's reacting to speed and it's not breaking for me. So this is just a nice bright light on the back of your helmet. I actually really like this. This is a cool feature, especially when you consider riding at night in a black helmet. Ain't nobody gonna see this on the road. Now the last thing I wanna talk about here on the bench and it's gonna be kinda noisy because they're all wrapped in plastic. We have a ton of different shield options on here from a ton of different colors. And this is one of the things people loved so much about the Air Flight and a lot of Icon helmets is that you can choose the style to match your helmet, make yourself look all cool. It's definitely something that draws people to a lid. And we've got a ton of different colors here from a light smoke. You've got a blue one, you've got the gold one. This golden red, if this helmet moves, this is gonna be the number one selling face shield. Positively guarantee it. And then you've got a simple smoke here, which I'm not gonna go for it. Personally, I don't like smoke shields. 
I'll just go with a clear one. But for the purposes of the review today, I'm gonna swap between the blue and the gold because I think they look actually pretty slick and I'd like to see what they look like on the helmet. Now, before we hit the road, I am gonna tell you here, I am very, very strict about the helmets that I wear, mostly because I vlog in them. My biggest criteria are comfort for a long ride and quiet for the cameras. So let's charge this bad boy up, connect it to my phone, and see how it stacks up against my $1,000 Shoei X14. So hitting the road in the Mach 5 Commander, what is this thing like to ride in? Well, first and foremost, I gotta talk about the actual fit on this helmet. It's one of the things that impressed me the most is right out of the box, the large, I popped it on my head, it fit and it was comfortable with very few immediate pressure points. And because the earmuffs inflate, you can basically get the perfect tight fit around your head. Also, the interior of the helmet is nice. It's not showy nice, but it's definitely a step up from your average budget icon or something like that. It's right in between the two. But while we're talking about the fit and the finish on this helmet, one of the things that I'd like to point out is that this pump button that's over here, it should be over here. The pump should be on the left side because your left hand is the one that's free to operate stuff when you're riding and you have to pump the thing up several times to get the right fit. So I would rather have the pump be here because I can pump it to get just the right fit and then I can just hit the button with my right hand to cause it to deflate on me. And I do adjust it an awful lot while I'm riding. It's hard to do with my left hand. I have to engage my throttle lock to do it or I slow way the heck down. Now we do have to talk about the vents in this helmet because that's the biggest flaw that I'm seeing on the road with this guy. So first and foremost, the chin vents, the Venturi vents. One of the things that's like a big selling feature on this helmet. This was what I thought was going to undo it in terms of its sound quality that was gonna cause it to be deafeningly loud on the road. No, actually. Do they really do a great job? I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're working any better than just creating a ton of positive pressure inside the helmet by forcing air in through a chin vent on something like my X14. I'm really not hearing any noise out of this Venturi system while I'm out on the road. What is causing noise? This brow vent right here. This brow vent drives me nuts. Oh my God, it's so loud. In both the open and closed position, something in this brow vent is whistling like a Dixie and I can't, I can't quite get it to shut the hell up. It's driving me nuts. And I know it's the brow vent because when I hear it whistle, I cover it with my hand and the whistle goes away. Last thing I wanna point out before we move on to the technology in this helmet is the visor. So. Part of the reason why I have the camera set up I have is so A, you look at the helmet better, and B, I cannot put a camera on this helmet. I cannot put a chin mount camera on here because of this peak. I can't open and close the helmet if I have a camera on it. Um, it's just, that I don't like this peak. Uh, that's a personal preference thing. I know it's a big part of the looks on this helmet, but it makes it very difficult for me to vlog in. But it does have a pin lock already installed in it, which is awesome. It's great you don't have to run out and buy another one or install it yourself. The only downside is if for whatever reason it comes off, you can't get a new one. You have to get a new face shield to put the pin lock or to get the pin lock back. Bit of a bummer. It's worth pointing out, but I've never had a pin lock fail on any of my helmets, so I'm willing to trust this guy. Now, let's get on to the fun part, the technology in this helmet. Well, it's po all powered by Cardo, so you know it's going to work great. Cardo stuff is bulletproof reliable. I've never had a problem with any Cardo unit that I've ever owned, and I've owned like a dozen at this point. Some of them given to me, some of them I bought with my own cashy money, none of them failed. The inflatable earmuffs actually do create a really nice seal around your ears, and it allows you to really hear the music better. I was testing it on the highway, opening and closing that earmuff thing, deflating and inflating them, 
And there is an audible difference in the sound quality the tighter you inflate the earmuffs. Which is just another reason why you should be riding with flying eyes. Because if you want this helmet and you wear sunglasses like I do, uh, you want thin stems. And the thin stems aren't going to disrupt that seal. That's specifically what they were designed for, for pilots. And uh, now it actually made its way into motorcycling. So there you go. Now, of course, the rest of the Cardo system is awesome. The voice commands work really well. Normally, I never use them just because, you know, my phone's right there or I have all the controls here. And I've used Cardos for so long that I just know where all the buttons are and what they all do. But I have been playing with the voice commands and they work great. It's just like, hey, commander, play music or music on, I believe is the voice command. It's, hey, commander, music on. And then music starts playing and then... Hey, Commander, pause music, or you got to remember the, the key phrases, but they work, and it, it's always listening to you, and it's ready for your input, which is cool. And on that note, let's head back to my place. Let's pull the helmet off and get my final thoughts and a final thumbs up or thumbs down on the Mach 5 Commander. Uh, all right, this is take five or six of the outro here. Now, the reason why I have to do multiple takes is because once my camera died and then another time I actually finished the video and then I sent it off to the folks at 509 because I wanted to make sure the stuff that I was saying was correct. And I'm glad I did because they actually had to bump the price of this helmet. They were selling it originally at $520. Now they're selling it at 650 to be Perfectly honest, I thought 520 was insane for this helmet. To be honest, 650 makes a lot more sense to me. Would I pay more than that? No, I would not pay more than $650 for this helmet. But at 650, there's a lot to love about this. The Cardo, flawless. The light is really cool. You've got the inflatable earmuff situation, which that's a really neat feature and it's so far, the only helmet I've seen that has something like this. However, at $650, my issue with the whistling brow vent becomes unacceptable. Now, I am gonna say right now that I did reach out to 509 when I sent them the video and I mentioned this brow vent. I asked if anybody else that they had sent helmets to had noticed this whistling problem. They hadn't heard of it from anybody and what they're actually going to do is they're going to send me a new helmet and I'm going to test it out and see if it does actually have that whistling issue. If it does, that's a real big problem and it has to be solved. Another thing I'm hoping that will be solved by the new helmet is right here. This cable that connects this Cardo piece to the rest of the helmet and the battery pack and all of that good stuff. The wire seems to be too short. The wire seems to be about a half an inch too short and it does not fit into the channel here. What that results in is a very subtle pressure point on the side of my head. It takes me a while to feel it, but I do eventually feel it and it's definitely there. However, it's entirely possible that these are two issues that just happened to escape QC or there were issues in the manufacturing process. That happens. But at 650 bucks, I'd like to see that net be a little bit tighter, especially, especially with something that separates your noggin from the ground. Now, let's give some feedback to the folks at 509 if they are going to make a version two of the Mach 5 Commander, I guess that would be the Mach 6 Commander. If they were gonna make a Mach 6, I would love to see a tighter neck roll because the tighter your neck roll is, the less road noise you're gonna get from underneath the helmet, and the quieter it's gonna be. Showy makes awesome neck rolls. Just, just copy their homework. Another thing I'd love to see changed, and honestly, I, I, at 650, I'm putting my foot down. I need to see the Fidlock on here be replaced with D-rings. I do not, I do not like this Fidlock one bit. I'm sure it works fine in crash tests. I'm sure it holds up great, but, Aside from the fact that I'm worried about it coming undone on me just by accidentally brushing it because it comes apart so easily, I am constantly having to adjust it. <laughs> and this cable right here, this, this strap, it doesn't have any button or anything that it ties to. So I just have a big strap dangling down. I don't love that on 
this lid. And if I have D-rings with just a little, you know, snap button here, like a showy does, again, just copy their homework. If that's on here, problem solved. The last thing I think would really elevate this helmet to something that's just, that's super, super cool, is if this brake light right here was actually replaced with something that didn't just light up, but lit up when I was slowing down. If this was an actual brake light and not just a red chase light, that would be so much cooler. I know they make stuff that you can slap on the back of your helmet, but this is already built in, it's integrated. It's not gonna throw off the weight of the helmet. This right here just feels like a missed opportunity and something I would love to see either Maybe they can do it in a firmware patch, or maybe it's something they have to throw in for the Mach 6. So, final thoughts time. Do I recommend the Mach 5 Commander by 509? Yes, I do. I think this is a good helmet. You are getting so many features packed into one well-made bucket. Between the pre-installed pin lock, between the Cardo, which works flawlessly, between the backlight here, the chase light, and all the rest of the cool stuff that's built into this lid, you are getting, I believe, $650 worth of value, and this is an ECE rated helmet, so you know it's gonna be safe. I have no qualms wearing this on my head, and I would wear it even more if this vent wasn't whistling. And I will follow this review up once I get the replacement to see if it's still whistling right here. Now, in the meantime, guys, a huge shout out to the folks at 509 for sending me this helmet and for working with me and sending me another one to test and try out. Make sure that some of my issues on this thing were just defects. If you wanna find any more information about this, click the link down in the description below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.